Thank you, Lisa, and thanks to everybody at WICMA. We are thrilled to be here. My name is Matthew Gold, and I'm the director of IO New Music, uh, a student contemporary music ensemble in the Williams College uh, Department of Music. Um, yeah, so we're just you know incredibly excited to be part of this project and to be able to collaborate on this and to be in this space. Uh, for this program, um, the first thing we thought about was Solowitz's work and specifically these prints in the Strict Beauty exhibition, and to think about you know uh, aspects of how they were made, the conceptual parts of them, what they you know how they're formed, and even the instructions that went into making them. Um, and specifically, there are four themes to this exhibit: uh, line arcs, circles, and grids, bands and colors, from geometric figures to complex forms, and wavy, curvy, loopy-doopy, and in all directions. And uh, I tried to find pieces that reflected some aspects of each of those. Um, so the program is made up of two older works, one by J.S. Bach and one by John Cage, who I think we can agree are both older composers at this point. Um, and then two very recent works, one by Fiola Evans and one by Jury Se. Um, and in addition to those four pieces, we asked four of our student composers to compose new works based on or in some way informed by works in this exhibit. And they came up with incredibly creative approaches, um, you know, looking at how the works were made, the, the, the formal qualities, in some cases using the work essentially as a score or as a set of instructions for the performers. Um, and so we're just thrilled to be able to have four world, world premieres um, as part of this. So with all that said, um, thank you again for joining us this afternoon, and I think we can get underway. Hope you enjoy the performance.
So the next piece is my composition entitled Two Arcs in Motion Over a Grid. Um, I wrote this piece, I was inspired by uh, Solowitz prints, or set of prints, arcs from sides or corners, grids and circles, which is right over there in the gallery. Um, what really inspired me about this work was these sort of fixed patterns that interact to create a process that's larger than the sum of its parts. Um, so that's what I'd sort of tried to emulate in the score. I also sort of emulated the shape of the patterns themselves where the score is sort of delineated along arcs um, and grids um, for each of the performers. Um, and the way it, the process sort of uh, appears musically is by having each performer have their own musical material, their own pattern that they're following, but then also moments of interconnection, moments of drifting together and coming apart that create something bigger than just the motives being played at the same time. Uh, so I hope you enjoy.
my piece Bloom is inspired by the solo at work lines from corners, sides, and the center to points on a grid. And it explores the relationship between freedom and constraint in music and how a piece can sound free and improvisatory even when it's through composed. Uh, it is influenced by the way that Lewitt seems to create these vivid and radiant clusters of lines which have been compared to stars blooming in the night sky despite the fact that the piece uses very precise measurements and it's set on a grid. So in my piece I sought to capture this tension through the temporal medium of music and explore the ways that it can capture the, this idea of blooming in different ways.
Hello, everyone. Okay. Um, I'm Jacob. I'm the composer of the piece Four, which is based on the work Bands of Color in Four Directions in All Combinations. Um, you saw this work earlier, and essentially, the way that I crafted the piece was taking um, the artwork and kind of turning it into the score in itself. So um, we have four instruments here. Um, each of them represents a color, and throughout the 16 panels of the work, they follow the directions of each of their bands. Um, and as voices kind of combine and join into e each other, um, you get this you know, combination and kind of merging of sounds and textures um, and colors. And so the whole thing is essentially um, you know, one big build and kind of um, a lot of colors weaving into each other, um, interacting. Um, you start out with what you can think of as solos, and then it turns into duets, trios, and then um, in the last four bars, four panels, everyone kind of joins together. Um, each panel is 15 seconds long, and so the entire piece, again, four minutes. So this is the piece. Hope you enjoy.
uh, <laughs> my piece, The Location of a Circle, is a response to Solowitz's 1975 work of the same name from the larger set, The Location of Six Geometric Figures. It's over there. <laughs> In Lewitt's piece, a simple diagram showing how to find the location of a circle mathematically is accompanied by a long-winded and frankly deeply confusing caption describing the same process. When I first read the caption, it struck me as very rhythmic. The convoluted recursive structure is embedded into the text and its breathless, almost panicky nature lent themselves immediately to music in my mind. The location of a circle aims to highlight the contrast between the highly cerebral geometric process illustrated in the diagram and the more bodily sense of stress and mental confusion evoked by the text. The tension between how we think of shape, figure, or form and how we feel it. Hope you enjoy. A circle whose radius is equal to half the distance between two points. The first point is found where two lines are crossed. If the first line were drawn from a point halfway between a point halfway between the center of the square and the midpoint of the top side to a point halfway between a point halfway between the center of the square and the midpoint of the right side, and a point halfway between the midpoint of the right side and the lower right corner. The second line of the first set is drawn from a point halfway between a point halfway between the center and the square, and a point halfway between the midpoint on the left side and the upper left corner and the midpoint on the left side, to a point halfway between a point halfway between the center of the square and the upper right corner, and a point halfway between the midpoint on the right side and the upper right corner. The second point is found where two lines are crossed, and the first line is drawn from a point halfway between a point halfway between the center and the square and the midpoint to the bottom side, and a point halfway between the center and the square and the lower left corner, to a point halfway between the end of the first line on the first set and the end of the second line on the first set. The second line in the second set is drawn from a point halfway between the point first two lines crossed, and a point halfway between the third and the first line on the first set, and a point halfway between the midpoint of the left side and the upper left corner, to a point halfway between the end of the first line and the second side and the midpoint of the bottom side. All whose center is located equidistant to three points. The first of which is located at the center 